Hello everyone, this is Ryan King and welcome to this Blender tutorial where I'm going to show you how to bake textures in Blender. So there are a few different reasons why you might want to bake textures. You may just want to take like your procedural materials and turn them into a texture map and then you can plug that in and that way you don't have to use all the procedural nodes. And also if you have like a model and you want to use it for maybe like a video game, so you want to put it in a game engine and within Blender, maybe you created the asset and you have like some procedural nodes, maybe you have some image textures and you've like edited them and changed the colors and stuff, or maybe you want to upload your model so that someone else can use it with a different 3D software, or maybe you want to upload your model to something like Sketchfab, something like that. In those cases, you're probably going to need to bake your textures into texture maps because Blender's procedural nodes and all Blender's like nodes that you can do editing with, like for instance, RGB curves or noise textures or things like that, that data within Blender doesn't work with other 3D software and it also doesn't really work with like a game engine or things like that. So when you're using procedural nodes or you, if you have a big node setup for your materials, if you want to import it into a game engine or a different 3D software or something like that, you're going to need to bake your textures. And I'm sure there are other reasons why you might want to bake your textures, but those are the main reasons. So I created this dragon model right here, and uh, you can see I baked the textures. And that way I was able to upload this on Sketchfab and everything looks correct. If you want to see the model on Sketchfab, I'll leave the link in the description. But when I was first creating this material, I used some different things like for instance, I used the pointiness value within Blender to kind of get those dark places in the crevices. I also used like a noise texture on his skin, different things like that. And those things wouldn't work in other 3D software and they wouldn't work when like previewing them in Sketchfab. And if you were gonna put them in a game engine, they wouldn't work as well. So I baked this out and as well as baking the color, I also baked the normal map. And that way you can see that there is normal data so that like the edges can bump out and the little scales there look like they have normal and then I also baked a roughness map as well so that I have data to tell it where the dragon's going to be more shiny and where it's going to be more rough. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to bake out all the maps that you need and then replace them for your original material setup. Just a couple things I wanted to mention before we get started. If you'd like to help support this channel, the best places to do that are over on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. And on my Gumroad and Patreon, I have the tutorial files. I also have artwork project files, procedural materials, and I also have different 3D models and assets that I sell over on my Gumroad and Patreon. And also, if you'd like to help support me monthly here on YouTube, I have the YouTube memberships. So if you click on the join button down below next to the subscribe button, you can join my memberships and you'll get some cool perks and also help to support me monthly. So those are a few ways to help support the channel if you'd like to help out. And one last thing before we get started, I wanted to thank Sketchfab for sponsoring this video. Sketchfab is a 3D model site where you can preview 3D models in your browser. You can even view them on a phone, tablet, or in AR and VR. They also have a huge 3D model store where you can purchase models and assets. You can even apply to sell your own models on the platform. Check out Sketchfab with the links in the description. All right, so in this tutorial, I'm going to be baking out textures for this procedural rock material that I've created. Now, if you'd like to watch the tutorial on how to create this procedural rock shader, I'll leave the link in the description if you'd like to watch that video. So basically what I did is I used like some different noise textures and things like that to create this procedural rock texture. But as I said, this isn't gonna work in like a game engine or a different 3D software or something like that. It's not gonna work because these kind of things only work within Blender. So you have to bake out texture maps if you want to preview this material in, for instance, a game engine or another 3D software or something like that. And as you can see, there are three different values that are being plugged in to this principal shader. There is the base color, there is the roughness, and there is the normal. So I'm gonna be creating three texture bakes for this material. So the color, roughness, and normal. Now, if your material has other things, like for instance, an emission, if maybe it has some emissive places on the material, then you could do that as well. I'll show you how you can do that. But the main ones that you're probably gonna be using are base color, roughness, and normal. And also, if you just have a base color, you could just do that as well. All right, so let's go through all the steps that you need to do to do texture baking. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click right here and I'm gonna drag down and that way this is going to split the window. I'm gonna click right up here and I'm gonna change this to the UV editor because the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually make an image texture and then tell Blender to bake it onto that image texture. So to make an image texture, you can click on the new button right here. Now the name, you can call this whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna call it rock color because this is going to be the color map for the rock. 
So I'm just going to name it rock color. Now the width and height here, this is a 1K texture on default. If you want to turn this up, you can. You could really just change this to whatever you want. Um, I would recommend that you keep the width and the height the same, but if you just want to change this to like 2,000 pixels, 4,000 pixels, 5,000 pixels, whatever you want to do, I want to make a 4K texture. That is pretty standard. So to make a 4K texture, I'm going to click on the top one, drag down, and then let go. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to change both of the values at the same time. Now to make it a 4K texture, right now it's a 1K texture, so to make it a 4K texture I need to times this number by 4. Now you can actually do that in Blender very easily. What you do is you hit the little star button and then you click on 4. So on my keyboard the star button is on the top of the numpad and also if I press shift 8 that also makes the star come up and that's basically just telling Blender to times it by the next number and the number is 4. So I'll hit enter and that is the resolution of a 4K texture, a square 4K texture. So if you want a 4K texture, you could just type in 4096 by 4096, or you could just type in anything that you want, or you could also like look online and find some texture resolution. So if you want like a 2K texture, whatever you want to do, you can just look those up. But if it doesn't matter to you, then it's totally fine. You can do whatever you want. You could just type in 4,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels, but I want a 4K texture, so I'm gonna type in 4,096 by 4,096. Now the color here, this really doesn't matter. I'm just gonna leave it as the default, which is black, because when we texture bake this, it's going to bake the texture over the top of this, so it doesn't really matter what color it is. And then I'm just gonna leave these all at default and I'm gonna click on okay. So now if I just zoom out here, we have created this rock color texture. All right, now the next thing that you need to do is you need to UV unwrap this mesh onto your image. Because if you've ever just downloaded an image texture online and you've plugged it into your material, you're gonna need some way of UV unwrapping the texture onto your object. Now this is a procedural texture, so in this case I use the object mapping, but because we're going to be baking this into a texture and then plugging it up, we need to properly UV unwrap this. So if you have like a prop or a character or something and maybe you've added seams and actually UV unwrapped it, then that's totally fine. I'm just gonna show you a very easy way to UV unwrap an object. If you haven't properly properly UV unwrapped it already. So what I'm going to do is just go over to the UV editing tab and then what I'm going to do is select everything and I'm going to press U and then I'm just going to click on the smart UV project. Now the island margin, I'm going to turn this up to like a 0.01 just so that each island has a little bit of space and then I'm just going to click on OK. So now I can zoom in here and you can see here is our UV unwrap. Now I also just want to click on this and just click on the rock color just so that I can see it on the UV map. Not super important but I just want to see it underneath the UV map. So again if you have like a character or a prop and you already properly UV unwrapped this that's great but for something like this I just did the smart UV project. Now there is one really important thing with the Smart UV Project, and that is you need to make sure that there aren't any overlapping vertices, because if there are overlapping vertices, then there's going to be some issues where the overlap is when you bake the texture. So to make sure this isn't a problem, you can just press A and A, just to make sure everything is deselected, and then I'm going to click on Select, and I'm going to click on Select Overlap. Now, nothing was selected, that's because nothing is overlapping, but if there was some parts that are overlapping, you just need to kind of move it around and place it nicely on this UV layout. So just make sure you have a decent UV layout, and then let's go back over to the shading tab. So where those UVs were placed on our rut color, that is where it's actually going to bake it on to the color map. All right, the third thing that we need to do is we need to actually add this rock color image into our material, but we don't wanna plug it up because we still want this procedural material to be plugged up. So we just wanna kinda of add it and just stick it right here in the material. So I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm gonna search for an image texture and I'm just gonna drop it right here. And then you could click on new and add a new image if you haven't added one already, but we already added one. So I'm gonna click right up here and then I'm just gonna click on this rock color to add it in. All right, and then just make sure that your object is selected and then just make sure that the rock color image is selected. And then I just have this up here so that when it finishes texture baking, I can just see what it looks like. All right, so now we can really get on with the texture baking settings. So there's a few things that we need to do. The render engine, if you have that set to EV, it's not gonna work because EV doesn't support texture baking. So you're gonna need to change this to cycles. Now, if you had this set to EV, that's totally fine. Once you're done texture baking, you can turn it back to EV if your scene was an EV, but just turn it to cycles for now while we're texture baking. And then when we're done, you can turn it back to EV. The other thing is that if you're rendering with your 
your GPU, if you have a GPU, uh, the texture baking isn't going to work. And so you're going to need to change this to CPU. So I render with a GPU because I have a GPU. And so it's a lot faster to render with GPU, but I'm just going to turn it to CPU while I'm texture baking. And then when I'm done, I'll turn it back to GPU. All right. So then right down here, if you scroll down, uh, this is right here on the render properties. You can see that there is a bake right here. So if I open this up, these are the bake settings. So there's just a few things that we need to do before we actually bake this. So the bake type uh, on default, I believe it's set to combined and we don't really want this because what that's going to do is it's going to bake whatever this is looks like right here. So it's actually going to like bake all the lighting and everything. Now we don't actually want to bake the lighting. We just want to bake the color, the roughness and the normal. And that way, when you add this into like a game engine or use it on a different 3d software or whatever you do, it'll actually interact with the lighting. Cause if we bake it with combined, it's just going to bake all the lighting here, like bake the shadows and everything like that. And in this case, we don't want that. There may be cases where you would want that, but I do not want that. So instead of combined, I want to change this to diffuse. Now diffuse is the same as color. So diffuse and color, they're pretty much the same thing. We're going to bake the color. So basically what's ever going into the color, if I, uh, I have the node wrangler add on turned on. So if I just control shift and click on this and then go into the material preview, basically that's what we want to bake because that is the color map. So it's going to create a bake of that. And then we can just plug it in instead of using all these procedural nodes. Now, the other thing here is this influence. Uh, there is this direct and indirect. We want to turn these off because again, it's going to do the same thing where it's going to like bake the lighting and that's not what we want. We just want it to bake the color. So I'm going to set this to diffuse and then set that to color. Now, before you click on bake, it's a really good idea to go file and just click on save again because sometimes Blender can crash. So just make sure you save this. And then really important, make sure that the object is selected make sure that in the materials, make sure that this is selected. And that way Blender will know what image to bake to because you have this selected. And then just set this up how you want. And then you're just going to click on a bake. And you can see right down here, um, it may go really quick or it may take kind of a long time. It really depends on how complex it is. And also depending on how big this image is, if it's like a really, really big image, it's going to take a while. And if this is kind of really complicated, then it will take longer. You can see this is taking a while. It's only at 2%. Um, and that is because this is a little bit complicated and is kind of detailed. And this is also a 4K texture. So it will just take a little bit. Um, I am just going to skip over until it's done. All right. And it just finished. So you can see if I zoom in here, that looks really great. There is our color map. So now what we need to do, this is really important. You need to make sure that you save this as an image file on your computer, because if you just close Blender, then Blender isn't going to save this. So you just have to save it on your computer, just like if you downloaded a texture online or something like that. So to save this, you can just click right over here on image and then just click on save as. And then I'm just going to save this as rock color PNG. You could also just save this as a JPEG if you wanted to, uh, but I will just click on save as and save that. All right. So that is finished now. So now what we need to do is we basically just need to do the same thing for the other textures. So I'm going to click right here and exit out of this and then also exit out of this. So now we need to make another texture. So you can click on the new button right here or the new button right here. I'll just click on new. And then this one, again, I want to be the same resolution. And this one, I'm going to call it rock roughness. So there we go rock roughness and then just leave that at the default and I'll click on OK with a 4K texture. So now we have that and then right here I can click on this and then just go to the rock roughness and that way once it finishes we will be able to see it right here. And then again make sure this is selected and make sure your image is selected. And then if we don't change anything here it's just going to use the color so we need to tell it to bake the roughness of this material. So click right here and we are going to change it to roughness. Now there are a bunch of different ones here. If you like have an emission, you could use emission. If you have the normal, which we're going to do after this, you could change it to normal. There's a bunch of different things here. So just choose the ones you need. I'm going to do roughness next. And then remember, just go file and save this again. And then just those two really important things, make sure your image is selected and make sure this is selected as well. And it has the rock roughness selected. And then you can just click on bake. And there we go. It's starting to bake. So I will jump over to when this is finished. 
All right, and the rock roughness map finished. So there we go, it looks really good. So again, we just need to go to image and then click on save as. And you can see here are the other textures that I'm using. So here is the rock color. And I'm gonna save this one as rock roughness.png and we will just save that. All right, so that is great. Now the last one that we need to do is we need to do the normal. And so that is the bump right here. So it's going to create a normal map. So what we need to do is just do the same thing. So we're gonna exit out of this, exit out of this. We're gonna click on new and this one, I'm going to call rock normal because it is a normal map, rock normal. And then the same thing, a 4K texture and I'm gonna click on okay. And then right here, we can just add in the rock normal and then just make sure that these are both selected and make sure that is at normal and then we're going to click on bake one more time all right and it finished so we have a nice normal map and this looks just like a normal map that you would get if you downloaded like a texture from a texture website so let's just click on image and then we'll just click on save as and again just like my other files i'm going to save this as rock normal and just save that all right, so with that done now, I can just unplug these and I can actually set up my images. So I'm just gonna unplug the roughness, unplug the base color and the normal. I'm just going to press B for the box select, just box select all these and just move them over for now. You could delete them if you wanted to, I'm just gonna move them over here. So now I just need to set this up like I would with regular textures you might download online. So I'm just gonna shifty this, drop it here and then shifty this and drop it right here because we have three of them. Now I'm just gonna click on this right here and this one I need to be the rock color and then this one right here I need to be the rock roughness and then this one right here, I need to be the rock normal. Now the rock color, the color, I'm just gonna put that in there and let's just also, uh, let's just change this back to GPU rendering and then I'm gonna go into rendered mode. And if you want to change this back to EV, you could do that as well. So the rock color, I'm just gonna plug that in and there we go. And you can see because we UV unwrap that, the UV unwrap is where it needs to be right on the texture. So there we go. And then the roughness, we'll plug that in. Now with any texture that isn't contributing to the color, the color space, we need to change this to non-color. So there we go, change that to non-color so that it works properly. And then the normal here, we also need to change that to a non-color and then we can plug this up to the normal here. Now you can see that there are some problems here and that's because we need to press Shift A and we need to add a normal map node so it converts it properly and now that we've set that up all properly you can see there it is and it looks just like the procedural texture so i'm just going to close this now so there we go it looks like the rock texture but you can see that it is actually maps instead of the procedural textures and so then if you wanted to you could just select these and delete them and now you just have a regular material setup and so this could be used in like a game engine you could also upload it to a website like Sketchfab or it could work in other 3D softwares because it has the data that it needs and other 3D software or game engines can use this data. So that's it. That is the basics of how you do texture baking in Blender. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to help support this channel, I will have links in the description to my Gumroad and Patreon if you'd like to help support the channel. But again, thanks for watching and I hope you found this video helpful and I will see you in a future video.